Hi, is this Calvin? Yes, hi. Hey, this is Dan at KTRS Radio in St. Louis. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Uh, we'll be ready for your interview with John and Trish in about a minute or so. Okay. All right, hold on It's good-looking men, so I'm not pulling the calendars. Meanwhile, he can't go to church anymore. Hey, there's the cover story of the RFT this week about a guy named Paul Kinsella, who also goes by the name Calvin. Well, he joins us here on the mindset to talk about what he's doing. And, and uh, do we call you Calvin? Do we call you Paul? What do we call you? Well, uh, call, call me Calvin Huckle, because that's the uh, baiter name that I go by. Okay, a baiter. Okay, explain. You're baiting whom into what? Well, 419 scammers, 419 Nigerian scammers. I'm sure most of the people that are listening have received these emails. They say uh, something like, I'm the Prince of Nigeria, or I'm trapped in Ghana, I have $10 million, and I need your help to transfer it to the United States. So wait a second. First of all, you don't think those are real? No. Okay. Just wanted to establish that right off the bat, I guess. Okay. okay go right ahead. And uh, uh, sometimes they're, they're, these uh, scams vary, uh, but usually it involves uh, millions of dollars. And at some point in the scam, if you would answer these, you are asked to pay a, a small fee, comparatively small fee, something like hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, to um, uh, uh, progress the scam along. You, you uh, like, for example, it would be a box of gold dust in. Ghana, and in order to get it to you, you would need to pay for a shipping cost. Of course, there is no real gold dust. It's uh, the scammer just takes the money, and then he'll ask you for more money if you do that. Okay, so you're trying to stop these scammers. What, take me through a case that you actually did where you're corresponding with one of these scammers, and what happened? Well, in the case with the gold dust uh, gentleman, I uh, asked him several very pertinent questions. I pretended to be someone from the New Athens Mineral Mine, Calvin Huckle. And uh, I asked uh, lots of questions about gold, and he unfortunately had to go and do research to give me intelligent answers to these questions. Um, eventually, I said, "I." He's making him go around and do work for you. Right, and then I uh, set up a meeting with him, and uh, had an itinerary set up, and I required him to meet me at the airport. And of course, I didn't show up. I picked an airport that was also very far away from the location he said that he was, and uh, I made the time for pickup at uh, 4 a.m. <laughs> Okay, so take me back real quick. Walk me through this again because I want to see how you're exposing these scams. So this guy, you were just going to give him money? Is that right? So how, how are you trying to pull off the scam? That's what I don't get. Well, I uh, pretend like I was going to pay for the gold dust. Uh, but the way it was set up is that the only way this particular scammer was going to get money from me was if he was going to uh, kidnap me or hold me up at gunpoint. Uh but do they ever get in trouble when you're done with them? Do, you mean does a, do the police ever arrest them? Right. No, never. Unfortunately, the uh, police do not uh, go after 419 scammers. It's it's practically risk free for them. Um, they're in another country. Uh, you, well, most of the time, it's Nigeria. Although are they do go. Really though, are they in another country, or is it some guy in his basement in Austin, Texas? Nope. The, the vast majority of them are uh, Nigerians, either working in Nigeria or in a neighboring country. Uh, sometimes they are uh, in England or Canada. In the general rule of thumb, though, is they don't scam anybody from the country that they're in. If they're in Canada, they scam Americans. If they're in the United States, they they scam Canadians. Okay. So there was a maybe 2020 Dateline NBC who actually caught up with some of these guys. They set up a similar scam. Uh, and I guess nothing can be done because what? it's people's stupidity that gets them money. So their point was, hey, if you want to send us money, that's your fault. Uh, I'm sorry, who, who's, who said that? The that scammer? Was, that was one of the scammers. When they caught up with him, and I, it might have been like a Chris Hansen from uh, Dateline, caught him and said, what do you think? And he said, well, you know what, it's their stupidity to send me money, so what have I done wrong? Yeah, that that's what kind of rapists say she was asking for it, and killers said I was provoked. Uh, that's just what a guilty person says to justify their horrific actions. He says, oh, I, I was just going after someone who was guilty, but or someone who was being greedy. But uh, that's not the only motivation for these scams. I've run into people who, frankly, have lots of other motivations for why they do it. Sometimes they send money to someone they believe in is in desperate need, and they generously give it to a church or a, a organization they think will help these people, and it turns out that it's scammers. Other times it's romance scams. Someone is just lonely and they're looking for companionship and these scammers take advantage of them. One woman I was able to warn named Kimberly, she uh, was being um, scammed by a, a scammer. How did, how did you find out who this was? How, the, did, how would you get her name? 
it's rather complex, and, and before I go any further, I should point out that this all, all the detailed information can be found on my website, 419helm.com. Uh, okay. So, uh, and I'm going to say that like 10 more times during this interview. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, at 419helm.com, it explains that I have a certain bait that has really worked out well for me. I've convinced a scammer that I am a fellow scammer in the United States and that I'm helping him to scam people. So during the course of the bait, he has given me the uh, telephone numbers and addresses of many victims that he wants me to send fake checks to. And instead of sending them the checks, because of course I don't have any and I would never do it even if I had, I called them up and warned them. I've been able to do this to, I th think it's up to 26 now people. Um, over half of them were people who were going to fall for the scam, and I stopped them. Kimberly was one of them. I explained to her that the man that she was talking to was uh, not sincere in his um, affections and that he was only after her money. And uh, she uh, thanked me, and um, what I was able to do is uh, she let me uh, take over her identity for her, and then I continued to debate him from her identity, pretending to be a woman uh, that she was. Okay, what was the, what was the, you said you used the name Kimberly. Um what was she like? How did she fall for this? Because I, I just figure most people know these are scams by now. What was her, what was her uh, demeanor like? Um, well, to be frank, in her particular case, she didn't come off as all that particularly bright. Um, and her emails that I read, because she sent me her correspondence with the scammer, was um, a little juvenile for, for a grown woman. Um, however, that is not uh, always the case with uh, victims. Uh, it's not so much a matter of intelligence. Um, but of psychology. These scammers have had years of experience and they know exactly what, push, what buttons to push. Has there been a victim that you warned that would not listen to you? Yes. I am, unfortunately, I had this uh, gentleman named JJ. He um, was an uh, elderly gentleman uh, who's under medication and um, I talked to his wife and to his secretary and uh, they have done everything they can to convince him not to give money to the scammers. I was able to keep him from giving money to one particular scammer, but I could not convince him not to give money to all the others. He had these ridiculous stories of the UN was hiring him to for military contracts. I, I explained to him they, that none of that was real, and uh, like I said, his wife even threatened divorce. So that gives you an idea of how deeply in the denial he was about this scam. He was just one of the people that I just could not help. Most people, though, were were uh, logical, and I was able I was able to talk them out of it. So when we get these emails in the inbox, and I still get two or three a day, they don't care. They don't care how many they send it out to because it's a numbers game for them. They'll right. find somebody who can be duped. Is that right? That's right. The, the idea is that, you you know, you say logically only like one out of a thousand people could be um, gullible enough to fall for this. So they send out 10,000 emails, and they get about 10 victims. Um, how do you stop the emails from coming, or can you? Well, you, there, there are uh, splat... Uh, spam blockers uh, and uh, the ones that I currently have do a pretty good job. They get about 90% of them, but still one or two will leak out. And I'm sure you've had that on your uh, um, uh, emails too. Well, mine sends it to the uh, junk email, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's in there. Mm. So I always go check the junk email. Hey. Yeah. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish with what well, you're doing here? With 419hell.com? Uh, um, well, at 419hell.com, I, I um, my idea is that I want to um, stall the scammers and waste their time. Uh, sometimes that causes them to quit out of frustration, so occasionally baiting them does, does work. Also, um, one particular scammer that I have has been giving me tons of uh, victim information, and uh, that's been directly helping the victims by stopping them from falling from the scam. It's also incredibly um, entertaining and engaging website, and I encourage everyone who's listening to go to 419 Icon, thank you. Oh, got it. Okay, and uh, in, in there you can listen to the um, phone conversations I've had with scammers, and you can and uh, also a few of them that I've had with the uh, victims. Where do you work? Uh, I work at home. I build websites for a living. Um, one of my other websites is um, normandcompany.com, and from there you can read all my other websites I've created. And um, uh, but right now this is my uh, focus, and really it's. Amazing. Good stuff, and again, you can read the whole uh, thing. It's in for uh, 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 RFT magazine. Right. You've got me so messed up with 419hell.com. So you can check it out, read all about it, those two places. Uh, uh, Calvin, thanks so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. One last time, 419hell.com. Oh, you got it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Calvin Huck.